Good morning. You know, the church house, as we say, should be very special to you. We should come here with expectation, not only a, a family, a, a body of believers, a, a kinsmanship, a, a joyous family atmosphere, but we need to come here with a purpose, to worship the one true living God. We need to come here with a purpose of this, the Bible, coming to life. It's a living word. And I always tell folks, uh, I get nervous up here. Because this is holy. I'm accountable. But folks, you're accountable for what you listen to, what you believe. Part of today's message is, what do you believe? Where are you getting your doctrine from? You know, the Baptists have a, a website you can go to. You can print it, download it. You ought to do that sometime and see what it's Baptists believe in. But folks, there's more than one Baptist. There's an independent Baptist. There's a missionary Baptist. And folks, you find some doc doctrines that are a little off, not jiving too good, not coming together. And folks, you, you can go on online, this technology stuff, it's, it's just way beyond my thinking anyway. Uh, but it's, it's amazing. You can just go to religious sites. We had a presidential candidate several years ago. His faith, his religion was uh, if, if you're a member of this body of believers, and, and it was on the website, and you could research it still, and I'm not going to call the denomination out. But if you join the church, you get to go to heaven. Okay? You, you join the church, and you're active in it, and you get to go to heaven and be with Jesus, but not God. And if you are an elder in the church, I guess we'll say Baptists, these deacons kind of folks, you get to go to heaven, be with Jesus and God. And that, that's their doctrine. It's right there on, on a website, and you can print it out, and you can read it, and you can read their materials. And we got folks that very devoted to their doctrine. They, they come by your house and stuff, and they heaven's here on earth, folks. Did you know that? No, it ain't. No. But folks, doctrine is everything. What you believe or don't believe better be based in this Bible. And folks, can I, I'm going to ask you, can you defend your faith? And we talked in Sunday school a little bit. Can you defend your faith, what you believe in? Y'all better at least know John 3.16. Because that's the heart of, of the message. Saved by grace. A uh, few years back, or well, several years now, the, some fancy word, uh, apologetic, started. And I was skeptical at first, but... You know, that, that's, that's a pretty neat. Uh, you, you get to go meet with other religions all over the world. Uh, you, you have conferences and everyone shares their faith. And I, I think about Paul in the Bible, King Agrippa, and he shared his faith with all these other demigods and false religions, whatever. But, but there's, it's a movement across the world. And guess whose religion only gives you hope? Who has an empty tomb? It's Christianity. It's the only doctrinal religion, Christianity, that gives you hope in heaven. Man, our problem is there's so many religions of Christianity. I've witnessed all kind of folks and uh, the folks, I believe I'm going to be good enough to go to heaven, I hope. Uh, I'm an elder in the church thing and I, I'm going to heaven, I'm an elder. You know, and people believe this stuff. What do you believe? What do I believe? When the Bible was written, there was no Bible. There's manuscripts written from the Old Testament laws. And, and you and you got to put your mindset in the people of this time. And, and today we're going to just stick with Jesus, what Jesus was teaching. And Jesus was teaching so much. Uh, this this message, I got a call to feel like I preached today. And, 
And I was led to the end times. In Matthew 24, Jesus gave a timeline of all the way to when he returns. And I was, I was caught up in one verse. And then I went to the Old Testament. And I was studying Ezekiel about how a church is set up and how leadership lets things slide and people let people quit coming. No one's taken care of. And, and the next thing I know, I'm, I'm back reading Jesus again. Now, I've, I got three, four pages of notes for this message. But folks, this word is living. And you watched, we're going to watch mindset Jesus boldly attacking doctrines, boldly pointing out falseness in religious views and point. And folks, we're supposed to emulate Jesus. We need to be doing that too. If we see something wrong that takes people away from God and we see something taught even in, in a church or Sunday school, we need to address that. At you deacons, we need to address that. If you see something not right, you've got to address it. Protect your flock. But today, folks, if, uh, I, got, I guess we say four points. Uh, uh, the first part will be going to Mark chapter 12. Uh, again, verse 35. But uh, I'm going to read a, a quote for you. I don't know if someone's got my slide up or well, I can just read it. Uh, I got a quote from Matthew 24. Uh, should be in that first part. Should be Matthew 24, verse 23, 24. All right, that was it. Those. All right, this is a quote. Uh, this is Jesus. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, and there believe it not. Next one. For there shall arise false prophets, Christ, false, and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Very elect means me and you. You say, How, what? Nobody going to fool me or deceive me. Uh, folks, uh, we was talking in Sunday school. There's religions out there. They train their people. To meet you, to come in your house, dissuade you from Jesus to the other stuff. There's uh, religions around the world. I witnessed to many of these folks, and they ride you in circles through this Bible. And the next thing you know, you're not in behind your Bible. You're looking at their material. You're looking at their Bible, and you're starting to doubt Jesus Christ. They're trained to do this, folks. There's people out there trained. Take Christianity out of your heart and fill it with other stuff. It's the same way in the Bible, and we're going to cover that today. Jesus fought it vehemently, whatever that fancy word is, very strongly toward them, and he said, this is wrong. You and I need that mindset. Protect your heart, protect your mind, protect your family, protect this church body. No false doctrine, we don't need it. Don't forget, you need to share your faith. Share biblical faith. Not, not my, my heart and my whims and whams. But what the Bible teaches. Do you know what the Bible teaches? What, what you believe? I know, I can guarantee you, I know, I know that I know. When I die, take my last breath, I'm going to be with my Jesus Christ. I know that. I had a place in time like the thief on the cross. Friday night. A youth church, your know, youth minister, the church in Jackson, and the minister been working with my family, and, and and he just, I just, the Holy Ghost grabbed me. I was in his office, and I got on my knees. I got Jesus, folks. I'm going to heaven, and I know it. Do you? My place and time was before the throne of God, the throne of grace. Jesus Christ, I ask Him into my heart, folks. You got to have that. You got to have that knowledge. And you got to share it. There's so much. So Matthew 24 is a list of things that happened. A lot of it's happened already. Uh, this is a quote toward the end of, of the prophecy of the end time. When Jesus shall come. And, and he says the very elect can be deceived. And, I'm gonna, and I just touched my heart. How can I be deceived? Very easily. What did the devil do? With Jesus, when he tempted Jesus, he took like three, and we say scriptures, wasn't Bible, but he took those, manipulated them, trying to 
to see Jesus. And folks, it, 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 you wouldn't believe it. I've been preaching like 29 years now. They got new Bibles that you can get. And they ain't, ain't godly Bibles, folks. There's false doctrine. God's a she and God's a it. And, and they're just rewriting what God said no to. And it's, they're there. You can get them. Folks, be careful. Whatever translation you use, uh, God's led me to King James. There's several good ones. But I guarantee you, folks, we're at the end times. And we're 2,000 years we've been waiting. It's closer and closer. But if you would, uh, if you would turn to Mark 12, verse 35, I have the slide. I got a few words I want us to look at. So we think about uh, Pharisees. Our, our title, I guess, a guide for a good doctrine. We're going to follow what Jesus is teaching. Uh, can you find the word Pharisees? All right. They, they were separated. Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. Pharisees, we're going to cover that. Jesus is going to point his finger at these Pharisees and condemn them. They're the elite elite. They're the, like PhDs. If, if me and you would say a college professor in a seminary, that's what these guys were. But they, they were wolves in sheep clothing, so to speak, in that concept. They manipulated the people, the, the manuscripts, as we say, the Bible in our terms. Uh, they added more laws than what God's laws were. They focused on their social status and their social period, what, what appearances look like. Folks, I don't know if you got to get in a satellite and you click through these religious stations and you're looking in your Bible and that person or that lady's up there preaching and, whoa, that ain't there. But people believe that stuff. They believe, oh, it's a good religion. Be careful. Doctrine is everything. Doctrine is everything. And we'll cover that with what Jesus said then. Uh, the next word, uh, scribes and lawyers... They wrote the, the old manuscripts in the Old Testament, we say, the, the, the laws, the, the, the writings, the, the prophets, and, uh, you know, they, but they manipulated how they wrote it, the translations. They manipulated to what suit their needs or the needs of the Pharisees. And Jesus pointed that out. We're going to cover that. Folks, there's religions that tear out whole chapters and stuff and never touch them and it because it goes against their doctrine. And folks, this is real. There, there's a, it's like a, a devil meant conspiracy to destroy true faith. And it's there and it's alive and it is growing. Uh, scribes and lawyers, uh, they wrote about legal things and manipulated the writings, changed phrases to meet their own ambitions and and if you start studying doctrines, religious things in America, you'll see all this stuff is very present. Very present in our society you and I live in. So it's very current, very relevant. And we'll see the word woe is a big word. Uh, God's judgment on people, special occurrences. We'll, we'll read that and we're going to cover the seven woes that Jesus spoke of. And uh, woe is a big word. It's, it's a condemnation Whoa, be careful. Watch out, you messing with God kind of thing. So if you get it, we'll begin our message. Mark 12, verse We'll cover through verse 40. Again, this is not taken out of context. This is this is an emphasis. Um, Jesus, verse 35. And Jesus answered and said while he taught in the temple, How say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? So he's questioning them. And the scribes, remember these scribes, they, they manipulate Manuscripts and stuff they wrote and they roll this out and Jesus probably was holding one of these maybe or, or someone was reading off of them and 
and they, they, he questions. For David himself said, By the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to me, My Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies my footstool. Psalms 110. David therefore himself calling himself Lord, whence he is then his son, and the common people heard him gladly. And he said unto them in his doctrine, Beware of the scribes, the writers of, of say God's word. Beware, beware. And this is 2,000 years ago. Folks, through technology, this is scary. What, what's being done throughout the world, throughout biblical translations and, and religious doctrines. Which love to go in long clothing, love salutations or greetings in the marketplaces. So they, they want to put on airs, as we say in the old days. I don't know what the young people call it. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they, they want to be seen as something fancy. And folks, there's a lot of that prosperity ministry, false healings all through America. And we're talking about millions of people follow this false doctrine. Are these guys, David, uh, King David, he's using some scripture. Uh, the people heard them gladly. You know, heard Jesus, and, and they're thinking about this stuff. Verse 38, and he said unto them in this doctrine, Beware of the scribes, which love to go in long clothing, love salutations in marketplaces, and the chief seats in the synagogues and the uppermost rooms at feast, which devour widows, and this, this is... A reference of, I always say, stealing money from a lot of widow women, as we say, or men widows. Um, they they feast on there. They're lonely. They need attention. I, I remember my, my grandmother, she had very little money, and, and she would tithe to various organizations. You know, for her, a dollar was a lot. And she tried. She was at home alone. All the kids and grandkids were nowhere near. And, and uh, some people took advantage of her, and I understand that. And folks, that's, that's how evil some religious institutions are. They take advantage of people. And he's warning to this, uh, these people, these, these scribes. Uh, again, we're going to get into Pharisees and things. that uh, Make long prayers. These shall have greater damnation. Jesus is telling them, you messing up, you're going to have damnation. Because of what you're doing, going against God, manipulating people, manipulating God's word. And Jesus is pointing that out. We need to turn that around. Do we? This church, deacons, again, guard this church. Guard your flock. Now this church, uh, you know, you're in need of a pastor. Get you a man called by God. Get you a man that knows the scripture. Get you a man that just has love and passion for you. There's all, all kind of preachers out there. But you get the one that God calls you to have. And you love and honor him and pray for him and, and respect him. Get one that's Bible led. You know, we, uh, if you would... Uh, I think I left, a, a, if you write any notes, there's a, another part of this point one, Luke 20, verse 39 through 47. I think I left it at the end. Uh, I had it as a reference. It, there's another reference to the same verse. Anyone's writing notes to Luke 20, verse 39 through 47. It's just kind of saying the same thing. And. It's important because Jesus mentioned it to the Gospels. So it's very important to think about it. So we, we look at that. He says, beware, scribes, Pharisees. He, he you know, get into clean bodies. They, they, they have all this look of cleanliness, but inside the heart, they're dirty. They're dirty before God. They, they seek public glory. They abuse their influence of the community. Our next verse, uh, point two, if you would, uh, Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. And if you would, skip down to verse 37. Point two here is, is Luke chapter 11, verse 37. 
chapter 11, we're going to look at some of the, that word woe. It's a condemnation of things going against God's ways, and it's, it's woe. You've messed up. And this is Jesus speaking again, Luke 11, verse 37. As he spoke, a certain Pharisee, again, these are the PhD seminary kind of folks, that they're, they're evil, they're wrong, they're, their heart's wrong. He's, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him, and he went in and sat down to meet, or to eat with him, share food. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed his hands. Wow! You know, my, my wife makes me take a bath and make sure I clean my hands. I do a lot of cooking at home, one of my hobbies, and, and she makes sure I, I wash. All right, that's all they looked at, these Pharisees, scribes, all these religious leaders at this time. We're looking good, feeling good, I'm looking good. But folks, it's your heart. God looks at our hearts. Jesus is pointing this out, you know, uh, how often do you and I look at somebody in a, a suit? Just about the only time you see me with a suit, a funeral or something where I'm preaching or something, but I'm a short pants and t-shirt guy. You see me most places like that. But it's, it's about the heart with God. Jesus is pointing this out. Verse 39, And the Lord said unto him, Now do you Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and platter? But your inward part is full of ravening, wickedness. Whoa. This is Jesus, folks. He, he ain't, as we say, uh, he's cutting to the chase in the old days. I don't know what young people say now, but he's, he's pointing it out. You're wicked in your heart. Are you bold enough to say that? You're getting around me, you know I am. But I point the finger at myself first, but. Folks, we got to be bold in our faith. We got to know what we want to believe. We need to have a doctrine that's based in this Bible. Jesus is teaching us today: be bold. Don't back up. Say say what it is. God said no, and you say no, and you better live that no too. Verse forty: Ye fools, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? So there he is. Pointing out, God's greatest stuff. What, what's all this cleanliness stuff? It's, it's your heart. It's the heart that matters. The inside, not the outside. Verse 41 said, But rather give alms of such things uh, as you have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. And their interpretation, their viewpoint, a lot of religions, they, they think, you know, there's, there's religions out there that, that think that all they got to do is go to church, join the church, and they get to go to heaven. There's religions you get baptized at seven days old. You're baptized at seven days old, a baby. And that's your ticket to heaven. People believe this stuff. It's a whole religious institution. It's a whole doctrine. Again, uh, emphasis, what do you base your doctrine on? Religious institutions? Some kind of religious leaders, folks, you better base it on the Bible. Verse 42, woe again, woe unto you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God. You pass over it. So you're doing all this for seeing the rich herbs, you know, tithe and whatever you, we're going to look at. But they pass over the God things. The Bible teaches us, watch out for teachers teaching the itchy ears. That it will happen at the end time. What feels good, people want. What people want is feel good from this pulpit and make you feel good. And then people are going to seek that and want that. And there's going to be people lining up to fill your pulpit, making you feel good. You don't need to feel that kind of good. Wouldn't it feel good that the Word of God convicts you, guides you, teaches you, makes you get up at night and say, whoa, I need to fix this in my life. 
The Word of God is alive if we let it be. Continued in, uh, again, verse 42. Again, woe, you Pharisees, you do this mint, rue, manna, herbs, and pass over the judgment and love of God. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Woe unto you Pharisees, for you love the uttermost seats in the synagogues and greetings and marketplaces. In other words, you love to stand out and look fine and pretty and fancy in front of people, and that's your respect. And leaving God out of it. That's what he's pointing to. Verse 44. Uh, Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye are as the graves which appear not. And men that walk over them are not aware of them. You know, we, we can go, again look, think about cemeteries. and we, we know there's markers and places. And a lot of times we respect that place. And try to walk in between the tombs. And There's battlegrounds. There's places hundreds, thousands of years old that it's underground and people walking over it like they don't even know it's there. Not on purpose. You just don't don't know there's dead bodies under the ground, so to speak. And that's the kind of religion they got. And he's pointing this out with the woes. Verse 45 of he says, Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto his master, Thus saying thou reproaches us also. And verse 46, Jesus says, Woe unto you also for you lawyers. For you laid men with burdens, grievous, too grievous to be born, and you yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. They hold people down on purpose, but they don't live that life. And these guys control society. It's a cultural thing we're looking at. Verse 47 says, Woe unto you, for you build the sepulchres of the prophets, and the fathers killed them. And we go back in time and go through the prophets in the Old Testament. We can read about it now. These folks just had manuscripts. We have a Bible. You could read about their deaths, tragic events in their lives and things, and but your father, so he's pouring out the very religious people of the Old Testament were evil and cruel. You're the sons of these. You're the same mindset. Folks, we got that right now where you and I live. We got false religious teachers and preaching and false healing ministries. And they're all over the place. And they're deceiving people by the millions. Are you going to be deceived? Are you the very elect that's going to get deceived? Verse 48 says, Truly you bear witnesses that you allow deeds of your fathers, for they indeed kill them, and you build their sepulchres. So again, it's tradition passed on. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send in prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute, that the blood of the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. And he's fixing to get into a, a, a beginning list of death of God's prophets to a current one is when this was written. Who hung Jesus on the cross? Who made that, orchestrated that? These Pharisees, Sadducees, uh, these lawyer people, these scribes, they orchestrated the people against. They're the same people that killed them prophets and the same people that killed Jesus. That's what he's pointing to. Verse 51, uh, we begin with Abel, Cain and Abel. Why was Cain, Abel killed by his brother? Jealousy. Abel did good before God, honored God. And Cain got jealous and killed his own brother. Uh, Prophet Zacharias uh, perished between the altar and temple. He, a martyr. Uh, and I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Verse 52, woe again, woe unto you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. Folks, the key of these lawyers, these, these writers, these manuscript writers that change the laws of God and manipulate them to suit their needs. Folks, there's religions that do that now with their doctrines. They say it's okay, and God has always said no, and they're still saying it's okay. People are following that. 
You enter not in yourselves, and, and them were entering and hindered. And verse 53, And as he said these things to them, the scribes and Pharisees began to urge him vehemently, you know, to criticize him, to provoke him, trying to make him make a mistake, laying wait for him, seeking to catch something out of his mouth. They might accuse him. Amen. Folks, I, I was studying this and reading it, and I... And that it just come to life in this current time and era we live in in America. And this is all real. It hadn't changed. You go to other countries, I've been to some, and uh, Christian can't really stand out. See, some of these, these countries with these religions, because you could get killed. Acid thrown in your face, hunted down, murdered. This is happening in other places of the world. Not here in America. We're comfortable, aren't we? You know, we was talking about that in Sunday school. We get comfortable. And what, what's the persecution we mainly get in America? It ain't much. If you get behind the scenes, though, they're changing laws. Beginning the epidemic, pandemic, whatever we call it. Uh, you could do this, do this, cigarettes, drinking and all. But you couldn't go to church, folks. That's persecution. Is more important, not, to, not so you couldn't go to church. That wasn't important enough, but you can go get alcohol and food, fast food, I mean, not grocery store, tobacco, and some of the liberal states, go get your marijuana and smoke it. But not church. That's persecution, folks. It's, it's here. It's growing. If you would... Uh, Turn with me to Matthew 23. We're going to cover the whole chapter of Matthew 23. It's part of where we can get into the seven woes. Again, my, my message in my heart and studying. Uh, it's Matthew 24. And I love studying. I've done number lines with it and tying a lot of stuff. It's a timeline Jesus gives for the end times. Matthew 23. We're going to look at, again, he, he's, he's pointing out Pharisees, scribes, control social religion. Jesus is just going at them. Uh, some things we'll touch on. So Christ is the master, not men. Only God is the Father. Folks, there's religions that you, you get your forgiveness uh, through a priest. You call him Father. Jesus says, no, nah, there's one Father. One mediator, Jesus Christ. Your forgiveness is at the cross of Calvary. Not at the, even up here at the altar. This is a place of sanctuary. You can go and have people pray with you. Preacher, deacons can come with you. Men and women of God can come down and pray over you, with you. It's not forgiving you your sins up here. It's a plea in your heart. It's coming before the throne. For the grace of God. We see again, Jesus is very, very, like John the Baptist telling it like it is. Chapter 23, Matthew. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So they're in control of all the, the rules and laws of God. But now Jesus has come, so these rules and laws, the Old Testament laws and stuff are, are no more. It's Jesus Christ. He's the mediator. He's the, the high priest. He's going to die on the cross. And we live in a new era with God through grace. Not by the laws, not by a priest once a year coming and tone the people for sins once a year in the second ho place of holiest of holiest. That's all gone. Jesus is getting there. But these people represent God like Moses did. And we've got to remember, he's pouring out. These folks ain't representing God. They're representing themselves, not God. Verse 3 says, All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, so follow the rules and laws that's telling you, but that observe and do, but do not. You can get into a different translation. He said, don't follow the way they live in. Practice in their faith. Follow God's rules and laws. Yes, don't follow what these people are doing or teaching because they're not living God's word. That's that's what the emphasis we'll look at. Verse four says, "For they bind heavy burdens 
and grievous to be born, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves would not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men, they make broad their phylacteries. That's one of them fancy words. That's, again, I think I preached here a little box you had on your arm and forehead, and you got Bible verses, as we say, but manuscripts, and, and they, they want to be seen. I'm a godly man. That's what they have. I'm, I'm a godly man. Look at me. And the heart is not right. Large borders of their garments, they look fancy. And love the utmost rooms, feasts, chief seats, synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and to be called men, rabbi, rabbi, or teacher, teacher. Look at verse 8. What does Jesus say about this? But be not ye called rabbi or teacher, for one is your master, even Christ. Jesus Christ is the master. He's the teacher. He said, don't follow this false doctrine. Follow God's laws, but not the false doctrine coming from these men. Verse 9 says, And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Again, there's religions out there where you use the word father. for their priest, or you know I said preacher. And you call them father and reverence them and kiss their hand and stuff. And they're, they're the father that's atoning your sin. Jesus said, No. Because people live that way in their doctrines, their religions. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. Who's the master? Jesus. Who's the mediator to God? Jesus. No one else. <coughs> but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever shall exalt himself shall be abased or humbled. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So if you want to be great with God, in a nutshell, be the humblest servant in this church. You want to be the, the very best in God's eye at this church, a man or woman, young people? Be the humblest and the best servant here, and you're going to be elevated in God's eyes as the best one here to serve His kingdom. That's, that's kind of what we're looking at. Verse 13, But woe unto you, scribes. And we're going to get into the seven woes, and uh, we'll do a recap. i got a slide for that, but... But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are near in to go in. Again, there's, there's religions that if, if you're not babbling some unknown tongue, you don't have the Holy Ghost, so therefore you're not going to heaven unless you've got the Holy Ghost and babbling in tongues. That's a whole religion. People live that. That's their doctrine. They go to church every day doing that. That's wrong. Shut up the kingdom of heaven. Verse 14. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour with us, or take advantage of, of needful people. People that, that's lonely, that that's need somebody and reassure them. And uh, so they, they get hung up and, you know, like today, telemarketers and, hey, you need to donate to, if you're a religious person, you need to donate to this charity. And, and folks, you follow a lot of those charity money trails, 90% ain't getting nowhere but in someone's pocket. Same thing Jesus is talking about. We're living it in a different flavor, but the same idea. Verse 14 again, Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites! You devour widows' houses, and for the pretense of making long prayers, therefore you shall receive greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. So they're witnessing, going all over the world and trying to convert them to Judaism, which is their own sect of Pharisees and stuff, and and uh, you, you're going to stay with Judaism. Remember these writers? They write in all these this new rules and laws that manipulate God's rules and laws. And, and they're, they're doing all this to get people to get into their sect. It's a sect. And it's wrong. Verse 16, Woe unto you, you blind guides! which say, whoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing, but whoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he's a debtor. 
That ain't God's way. You're worshiping the tithes and offerings. Jesus said, no. Verse 17, you fools and, and blind, for whether it's greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth gold. Verse 18, and whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing, but whoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he's guilty. Folks, we, we can really consider this altar, this pulpit, holy. We better. Because we're humbling ourselves going before God. His throne of grace. These false religionists manipulated that. Manipulated people's hearts and wants. Verse 19. You fools and blind for whether it's greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. Whoever shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Do we honor ourselves when we tithe or honor God? This church has a budget committee and all. Are you spending your monies for the glory of God or self evidication of the church? It must be edifying God. Whatever we do at this church or any church. It needs to be edifying God and the kingdom we're creating here. As Bruce said, here on earth there's, there's, there's a kind of kingdom here. The, the coming kingdom is in heaven. But if we have a Christian kingdom here. King Jesus is our Lord. Verse 23 says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and mince and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of law, judgment. Here's the heart of it. They omit judgment, righteous judgment, mercy. They omit merciful and faith. These ought you have done and not leave the other undone. You blind guides would strain a gnat or swallow a camel. Cultural thing. Uh, I don't know how you would do this. Uh, I have been around real camels, and uh, they're nasty beasts and stuff. But they're unique critters, and uh, like the the you know camel on his knees crawling through the eye of the needle thing. It's one of them cultural things. And he said, verse twenty five: Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but within you are full of extortion. And excess. Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, for the outside of them may be clean also. Again, it's a heart thing. It's not your outward appearance that matters with God, it's your heart. Verse 27 Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto a whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Just because we, we, we understand the Bible school, Sunday school, wolves and sheep clothing, that's, that's what we're talking about here. Having an appearance of goodness and righteousness, a man or woman of God, but inside it, uh -uh, it's hidden there, the evil. Verse 29, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and, and say, If we have been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers of them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of the which killed the prophets. So he's, again, it's a, he's saying you're the same people that kill these prophets. Your bloodline through this evil. Your forefathers of evil false religionists, you're the same bloodline that killed the prophets. These are the same guys he's preaching to that's going to have Jesus hung on the cross and killed and murdered. Verse 32, Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, you serpents, you generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? Remember John the Baptist, you vipers, you snakes. 
Folks, we need to get bold in our doctrine. We need to get bold in our witness and in faith. We need to shock people. God said, no, that'll take you to hell, living that way. We need to have that boldness. We need to be like Jesus here, pointing it out. Verse 34 says, Wherefore, behold, I send you unto the prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify. Some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. If I remember right, the, uh, the disciples, apostles, uh, uh, only one died of old age. The rest of them were martyred. Horrible, horrible ways. So he's telling them, he's foretelling the ones he's preaching to now are the same ones that killed Jesus on the cross, the same ones that killed the apostles and the early church members. The early church members hunted down like wild dogs and, and slaughtered and murdered for a couple hundred years. You and I, what persecution do we have here in America? Verse 35, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth from the blood of the righteous Abel and to the blood of Zechariah, Zach son of Arrakis. So that's Zacharias, the prophet, his bloodline. He was son of this guy, Rachias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Very I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. It's like a timeline of the beginning of the murder of the prophets to the time Jesus is speaking. And we see the compassionate side of Jesus' the next few words. And, uh, verse 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy chicken, children, sorry, children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and you would not. So Jesus is like a, how many of y'all got yard birds? You ever watch the mama, if it's raining or, or, or they're scared, she, she'll open them wings up, and then babies crawl up under there and snuggle. I don't have yard birds, so. But I know the, the, the idea. That's what Jesus wanted. He just wanted to love them. Your mind come to me. And those religionists led the people to hang him on the cross. Verse 38. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate or empty. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth till you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I got one more slide. It's kind of like an overview of the woes. Uh, kind of putting in a little nutshell for us. Uh, the seven woes to describe the Pharisees, hypocrites. Basically, you shut up the kingdom of God. Instead of getting people to, to God, to Jesus Christ, they cut them all off from it and lead them away from God and heaven. Devour widows will take advantage of, of vulnerable people. Pretense prayer. You're voluptuous. You're doing something looking fine and pretty and fancy, dressing right, but your heart's wrong. Make converts to Judaism and not Christianity. You're blind guys. What what are they leading them to? They're blind. Their hearts are blind. They're not leading anyone to heaven. Not having good judgment, mercy, or faith. You appear clean, but inside they are evil. Hypocrites, call them many times. You pretend to honor the prophets, but go against their teachings. Folks, we're going to have an altar call. Candace comes, please. Uh, folks, what is your doctrine? What's it based on? What do you believe? Can you share that faith? Can you lead people to Christ? Folks, all you need is John 3.16. But folks, there's some, some false religious people. There's false religions, doctrines. There's false prophets, false preachers, false ministries. Just like it did in the, this, what we just read. They're going to lead people astray. They're going to lead them away from grace and mercy and judgment. They're going to lead them from, from away from the cross of Jesus. There's only one Father, and that's the Father in heaven. There's only one mediator, Jesus Christ. There's only one Lord, Jesus. There's your doctrine.
The only way to heaven. Not what you do, what I do, but what Jesus did on the cross. That is your doctrine, and you need to live it. You're saved by grace. When we get past that thought of grace, we get in trouble. Nothing I can do to get to heaven but what I did when I was 13. Jesus come into my heart, save my soul. Would now, if you please stand.